There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today.
What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in to Simply Cyber Podcast. My name is Eric Taylor. I am taking over as guest speaker for a moment. Audio check in. Anybody hear me? No, I do not hear you, Gerald, at all. Not even in the uh, in the platform. Let me know in chat. Do you hear me at all? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? How about that? No, that's not right. Oh, got you. Got you. All right. All right. All right. I think I got it. Do we have audio? Do we have audio? Freaking. Fuck it. Oh. Um, do you hear my sound effects? Yes, sir. I do. Yeet. Do you hear my music? Yes. All right. We might be back. Chat, up. Chad, put right. it in here. Do y'all, do y'all hear him? Just to make sure we're all right. Chad, it, Chad is like lit up right now. All right. So when you say you can hear us now, are you saying Jerry? Oh, we got you, Jerry. Okay. Thank you, Eric Taylor, for being available. Really quickly, just Eric, you want to talk about your shirt for a hot minute? Oh, this is going to be the new swag that we're going to be putting out. It came out a couple years ago, but cybersecurity, the few, the proud, and the paranoid. So um, we'll be making another version of that here real soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric, for always being available for the hotness. Uh, we'll we'll uh, let's see, try to get this back on. We hear you. I do not hear music. Okay, hold on one second. Let's just confirm the music. All right, hold on. I can hear the music. Eric can hear the music. Let's get a confirmation on the music because if you don't hear the music, you're not going to hear the po podcast. Let's just confirm this. Nice. All right. Music's good. All right. We're back up and running. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, here we go, people. Like it never happened. Episode 495 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Brief. And this is a straight Simply Cyber production. Base case, I, I missed him. I'm telling you, I missed him as a mod yesterday. And he definitely, uh, you know, was like, oh, we'll see what happens when you forget about base case. And then obviously audio issues uh, awry. So welcome everybody to episode number 495. Genuinely appreciate y'all sticking with me as I work through the technical issues. Shout out to Eric Taylor for coming on stream and trying to uh, be available, frankly, to bail me out if I needed to reboot. Anyways, guys, over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Chris Young, Khalil Ali, Eric Taylor for sure, Keith Ferguson, who is a first timer yesterday. I missed it. McKinde, EP, DP, KP, Omatola and so many others. We're all going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be giving my expert analysis and opinion on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. Um, hold on one second. Um, listen, we got a, we got a lot to do on the show today. There is, um, there is a uh, jaw jacking at the at later part of the day. Let me just kind of mow through this. All right. Quick shout out to the stream sponsors. Uh, Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done uh, by cyber attacks. They help uh, business owners from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. Guess what, guys? Barricade Cyber Solutions. Not only can they pinch hit on a Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing podcast, but they can literally bring the heat when it comes to helping your business dig out and deal with nasty ransomware threat actors, which is all the rage right now. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Thank you very much, Barricade Cyber. Oh, yeah, don't worry. We're going to get to Intel in a little bit, noob. No need to spam chat. Uh, guys, want to tell you about Panopsi? Get a partner who, under noob, you don't need to spam chat. Uh, get a partner who understands your cybersecurity program and understands your business goals. Panopsi Security, they're basically epic at getting left of boom and coming in and helping your business get straightened out on, um, you know, basically taking an information security program from reactive to, um, thank you, Kimberly, from reactive to proactive. 
And basically, uh, basically, if you're in charge of an information security program, don't expect to be expected to know everything. Okay. Sometimes you need a little bit of help. Um, there is, you know, colored money, uh, uh, OPEX that can pay for getting a little bit of guidance, a little bit of consulting. Come on down, uh, and check out panopsi.com panopsi, uh, com. And then anti-siphon training, more about them at the mid-roll. It is Wednesday. We are going to do Worldwide Wednesday in a hot minute. Uh, I've got a lot to talk about, a lot to share. We are going to be dancing Ricardo Benavides. You better believe that. Guys, really quickly, each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE. They stack two and a half a week, 10 a month. So be sure to say what's up in chat. Hashtag team live. If you're live here, 254 of you appreciate it. Excuse me. If you're on replay, hashtag team replay. Definitely love seeing all the folks on team replay sharing their thoughts on the stories. Uh, shout out to Chris Weaver for uh, time marking all the stories. This has been great. I love myself some team replay. Although I will say, and I'm going to say this for the next few weeks or the next week, team replay. I know it's going to be really difficult. Sometimes I know you are in the middle of the night. Sometimes I know um, it's just inconvenient timing for you. I'm sorry. But if you can be at the 500th episode team live, we are doing massive giveaways, massive giveaways. Please, if you can, 500th episode, November 22nd, team replay. Um, I, I want you guys to get in on all the hot action. All right, uh, guys, if it's your first episode, you're in for a treat. Uh, hashtag first timer in chat. We have... Um, a sound effect for first timers. We have an emote for first timers and we love welcoming first timers. Simply cyber is an inclusive community. Even if it's, even if you've been here five minutes and you're like, why is this podcast got audio issues? Believe me, that's, <laughs> that's normal. Second of all, um, we, we love welcoming new people. Even if you've been here for five minutes, you are absolutely welcome here and, uh, welcome to learn. All right, guys. Uh, let's do this really quickly. I want to give a shout out to ACI Learning, uh, formerly IT Pro TV. Where's my little buzzer thing here? There it is. Listen, IT Pro TV, now IT Pro from ACI Learning, is the international online training solution that professionals in audit, cyber, and IT turn to for binge worthy content. Use my promo code simply cyber30 to get 30% off your first month or first year. There is a pinned comment over on. Um, YouTube, you can see it in the screen right here. If you go to my link and you use Simply Cyber 30, you'll get 30% off. Uh, if you are a veteran, first responder, or a teacher, I believe you get 60% off. So as much as I'd love you to use my code, to get the most bang for your buck, get the most value. Absolutely. All right, guys. Now, because of that, we are going to do Worldwide Wednesday, which is arguably my favorite activity. I love first timers. Whoa, Nina. Hold on one second, Nina. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal, Nina. Where's our where's our first timer emote? I love I love first timers and I love Worldwide Wednesday. Cyber Ranger, you know what? We're gonna give it to you. Cyber Ranger, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party. Sean Williams, team live, first time live. Usually a team replay. You know what? We'll give it to you. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, there you go, everybody. Thank you all so very much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are more than welcome to be here. All right, guys, I'm not going to play Daft Punk like I normally do. We are going to play a different song. But when the music starts going, we're going to go 2 minutes, 37 seconds. And I'm going to ask you all, where are you from? We're going to see if we can cover this entire map, every continent, in a few minutes. So get ready. Let's boogie, people. Mods, get ready. Here we go. All right, y'all. Where are you at? Let's run around the world. Before we get into the top cyber news stories of the day, let's go, let's go, let's go. Niagara Falls, Canada online. Love it, love it, love it. We only got one person in chat. USA, Dirty Jersey. That's its own country, isn't it? Welcome to Afghanistan. Here we go. Middle East is online. Thailand's bringing Asia online. Boom, baby, boom. Dirty Jersey, the UK is online. What's up? I see you, New York. I see you, Ohio. Yeah, big Texas. Hey, Spain, what's going on? I love it. I love it. I love it. South Africa, bringing the continent of Africa online. Love it. Hey, Tampa, St. Pete. Love it down there. Low countries up in here. We got Afghanistan. Alabama's bringing the heat. Hey, Malaysia, I see you. Where's my Malaysia? Malaysia. 
Boom. We got you. Hey, Detroit Rock City, I see you, Motor City. Wisconsin's in the house. It's cold up there right now. L.A., West Coast love. Thanks for getting up early. What's up, North Carolina? Boom. Hey, Va Beach, I see you. Brooklyn, love me some Brooklyn troublemaker. Bangalore, India is online. Hey, ta- uh, uh, Toronto, Nigeria bringing on the heat for Africa. Boom. Little, little, uh, little Upper West. Hey, Poland, nice. Poland, love the sausages. Hey, Philippines, come on down. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, Pacific Rim, no big deal. We got you. Hey, Bay Area. Bay Area, I love it. Uh, early 90s rap, MC Hammer. Known for You Can't Touch This, but he was a bad dude. People didn't mess with Hammer. Turkey's online. Yes, Turkey, bringing you online. Let's go. Jacksonville, Florida. South Flow Rider. Hey, Philly, France. I see London. I see France. Let's go, Denver. Oh, there's no music? Oh, no. You guys can't hear the music. That sucks. Ethiopia is online. We'll figure out the music afterwards. If we're not having music, that's a problem. Wales is online. Sorry, Wales. You got pulled in with the UK. Hey, Chrissy Jordan. Connecticut. Boston. Beantown's up in here. Morocco. That's a first time for Morocco on the channel. Ethiopia. We got you. NYC. Nine seconds. Banglapore, DR in the house. Hey, Leonardo. Boom. We got the DR. All right. All right, guys. Now. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So I don't know why the music was low. That's fine. Uh, we are. Where Where are we? So South America, no love. I'm going to go through back through chat. Hey, Italy, I see you. We've got massive European. Massive European access. Nigeria, India, uh, Afghanistan, PR, France, Malaysia, India. We got all these. Colombia. Oh, no. Kimberly can fix it. Found Columbia. Guess what, y'all? Uh, hold on. Do we have Australia? Did Optus get knocked? Knock Australia back offline. Is anyone here on? Is anyone here Australia? Because we need we need to know really quickly. Alex Goodwin, internal stranger. We we usually have solid uh, Australian access. Christopher K. Hall, we got it. We got the Columbia. Is Australia going to hold us back again? With all due respect, I do love me some Australians. Oi, oi, oi. Good afternoon from Sweden. We'll put Sweden on the board. Sweden's on the board. All right, guys. We're going to have to get back to the news here. Hey, Pennsylvania. Damn. All right. So we did not get around the world because of Australia. Again, no disrespect. No disrespect. But we South America did show up. Uh, but Australia did not. So uh, unfortunately... Yeah, uh, wh- wh- I, maybe this is the appropriate one. Catch me outside, how about that? All right, Australia, catch me outside, how about that? All right, guys, uh, we had a good time, but now guess what time it is? It's time to get to work. So do me a favor, get your favorite beverage, whatever's appropriate right now. I have coffee. Sit back, relax. Hold on, what? This is, hold on, this is just coming across the wire right now. Darcy Ma. Is Darcy Ma confirming she's in Brisbane? Darcy Ma bringing the Gold Coast online for Australia. All right. Congratulations, everybody. I'm going to count it. I'm going to count it. I love going around the world so much that we're going to count it. Nice job. Thank you, Darcy, for bringing Australia online and letting us go around the world. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, Good times. All right, guys, time to get to work, time to get to business. Do me a favor, sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news wash over us in an awesome wave. I'll see you at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. I'm Sean Kelly. IP Storm Botnet dismantled after hackers' guilty plea. The FBI have dismantled the IP Storm botnet proxy network and its infrastructure this week following a plea deal with the hacker behind the operation. IP Storm malware was first spotted in June of 2019 and used the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS, peer-to-peer protocol to infect thousands of Linux, Mac, and Android devices worldwide. 
Back in September, Sergei Makinin, a Russian and Moldovan national, pled guilty to three hacking charges that each carry a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. Makinin made at least $550,000 by selling illegitimate infected device access to customers seeking to hide their internet activities. He agreed to forfeit all crypto proceeds related to the operation. All right. So obviously, first and foremost. All right. So this is really cool. So this Moldovian Russian uh, national uh, basically had access to a, I want to say, was it a botnet? Um, it was a botnet that allowed him to do things like denial of service attacks, obviously, and hack thousands of devices around the world. So um, through it, uh, let me see really quickly. You could sell illeg illegitimate. So when you have, okay, so here's the deal. When you have a botnet, right? You own those machines. So obviously you can weaponize them to do a denial of service attack, right? Hey, everybody attack this thing over here. But you own those machines, which means you can get in them and access them too. So when you have that like farm, uh, you people are interested, you know, they want to get in. Initial access brokers is a whole thing on the dark web. So by owning these things, not only do you have a um, basically a low orbit ion cannon to blow websites off the internet, but you can also sell access. And then a threat actor can just jump into a machine, take a look around, see if it's a high value target, deploy ransomware, deploy keystroke loggers, deploy whatever they want. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this particular weapon, it says IP storm, which you might look at and say, oh, like an in internet protocol storm, like a denial of service storm, right? Uh, but what I would argue is it might be better called IPF storm, IPFS. So really, really quickly, just to take it back for a minute, because this was like a hotness. This was the hotness, like maybe six months ago, a year ago. And it was really confusing. And I personally was like, holy crap, how are they going to deal with it? One of the key elements of this dude's infrastructure is that it used the IPFS file system, the interplanetary file system, which I know sounds like marketing gobbledygook. But the idea is that when you have a file system on your workstation, it's like localized. When you have a file system on cloud, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's contained within that one space. So if I was to take down your cloud instance or unplug your computer, that file system is screwed. Okay. Sorry, Kennedy. However, with the interplanetary file system, and I encourage you to go check it out, it basically leverages like blockchain to have it um, duplicated and distributed in a decentralized way, which makes it incredibly difficult to take down. There's no kicking in the door and unplugging the servers. There's no getting um, a, a, um, a search warrant for a data center in Virginia at like Terramark or AWS East and kicking in the door and being like, all right, we've got this. Now, obviously, there is uh, challenges. If it's decentralized, then law enforcement probably could get into the network a little bit easier as part of the de decentralized file system. But the point was, it was very resilient. So I personally was like, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, man, this is really interesting. I wonder how law enforcement is going to address this. Now, this right here, again, kudos. Kudos, kudos to law enforcement. I am a huge fan. It's like, guys, okay, I'll tell you right now. I love infographics and I love FBI takedowns of advanced uh, threat actor infrastructure. I just, I just love it. After reading um, Tracers in the Dark by Andy Greenberg, uh, I just, I have like a penchant. Uh, also last year, I don't know if it, it was never made public. So if you were there, you were there, but the FBI came to B-Sides Charleston last year and did the keynote on how the two off, uh, case officers who were in charge of taking down Emotet infrastructure gave a talk. It's fascinating. Anyways, long story short, this is a huge win for the good guys. Um, this dude is did a plea deal, so he probably gave access to his client base. He definitely gave access to the infrastructure so the FBI could take it down. You know, half a million uh, compromised hosts uh, are probably not compromised. Uh, the final thing I'll say about this, it's not uncommon for law enforcement when they get control of um, infrastructure like this to send a command to the 
compromised hosts to cleanse themselves or purge themselves. So it's really cool. It's like a way to leverage this in order to remove the infection from all the machines, right? Because just remember, like malware is just software. So if you send a command to delete the malware from the boxes, it'll do it. And uh, we, we, it's not uncommon to see law enforcement do that as part of the, as part of the, you know, I guess, case or the cleanup. So DOJ, uh, hopefully sending, sending uh, concerns down the backs of threat actors spines about not committing crime. Federal court rules social media giants must face child safety lawsuits. On Tuesday, a U.S. district judge rejected a motion for social media giants to dismiss lawsuits against them. School districts across the U.S. have filed suit against Meta, ByteDance, Alphabet, and Snap, alleging the companies cause physical and emotional harm to children. Additionally, last month, 42 states sued Meta over claims Facebook and Instagram, quote, profoundly altered the psychological and social realities of a generation of young Americans, end quote. Tuesday's ruling states that the First Amendment and Section 230, which says platforms shouldn't be treated as publishers of third-party content, don't shield the platforms from all liability. Many of the plaintiff claims relate to alleged defects on the platforms, including insufficient parental controls, weak age verification systems, and difficult account deletion processes. Okay, so no one's going to disagree with this. Um, you know, this is a parent's decision. We, you know, at the Osher household, we're very conservative and on and strict with what, you know, social media, our children are allowed to access basically none. <laughs> um, but I mean, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, um, and, you know, social media, hi not hides, but social media operates under the First Amendment, third party content, you know, they have policies, age verification, but you, you and I both know, like any kid can get through it. A lot of parents just like, approve through it or, Hey, change your birth date to say, instead of 2012, have it say 2002. There you go. You're an adult now. Boom. So, um, people are going after it now. We'll see where it goes. The, the one thing I would say, and I agree, uh, frankly, I agree. So this is a, hold on. This is a tinfoil hot take. If you're new here, every once in a while, I provide opinions versus, uh, objective analysis. And that, and I always qualify it with the old tinfoil hat. So here's the deal. I, I do think some of these, I mean, there's been rumors, I unconfirmed, I guess, of uh, TikTok, you know, content on TikTok in the United States is different than TikTok content in China. China is more educational content. Uh, United States is more entertainment content and, uh, you know, uh, beauty standards and, and, you know, psychological kind of things. So I don't know if there's been research on it. The problem is, the problem is, and, and honestly, I don't know how you solve for this, but the and this isn't really a cyber story, but the problem is that you can't you can't undo it, right? If if a bunch of kids, if an entire generation grows up getting kind of manipulated or psychologically, um, you know, manipulated, you can't be like, oh, we did all this research and figured out that you guys got screwed for the ten years you were young. Like you can't unwind that kids are developing, their brains are growing, they're learning when they're young. You can't be like, oh, hey, you're 25. Watch this like 30 minute video and like let's deprogram all the things that were wrong that, you know, um, this first world power pushed down on us. Right. So we'll see. I don't know if lawsuits are the, are the case as much as maybe good parenting. I don't know. Um, again, it's it's hard to. It's hard to say, you know, be a good parent because, you know, there's no instruction manual for being a parent. But you, I don't know. I'm a big fan of getting involved <laughs> with your kids. Authorities warn of royal ransom gangs, activities and rebranding. On Tuesday, the FBI and CISA issued a joint advisory focusing on the threat posed by the royal ransomware gang. Royal has targeted more than 350 victims worldwide, netting $275 million since September of 2022. Authorities say Royal leveraged phishing to gain initial network access in nearly 67% of their attacks and continues to deploy partial encryption and double extortion tactics. The partial encryption technique allows Royal to throttle down the encryption percentage for larger files and helps to evade detection. Royal is believed to have emerged from the now-defunct Conti Group and may again be rebranding itself as Black Suit, a gang that emerged in the middle of this year. The advisory includes a list of files, programs, and IP addresses associated with Royal's attacks and recommends organizations remediate exploitable vulnerabilities, bolster employee phishing training, and enforce multi-factor authentication across their systems. 
All right. So again, uh, for the sake of time, because I was a hot mess express uh, starting the show, uh, I'm trying to go a little bit faster. Royal Ransom Gang, um, whatever. They're the ones, I'm almost positive they're the ones who attacked, um, hold on. Uh, I want to say the either Royal or Vice attacked the LA County School District. Um, let me see really quickly. Royal Ransom, they're no joke. Uh, they have targeted 350 million global victims. Uh, let's see, uh, victim list, victim list. Um, come on, bro. I don't see a victim list. Anyways, they're no joke. They spawned out of, um, Conti. If you remember really quickly, Conti. Well, here, let me tell you this really a couple things. One, whether it's Royal or it's Conti or it's black suit, whatever their name is, uh, obviously some like the Conti group broke up and then certain members of that faction started Royal. And now they're either it's too hot and law enforcement's on their butt or they're picking up some new members. And because of like contractual <laughs> obligations, uh, they're spawning off another threat actor group called Black Suit. That's all that matters. It's the same group of people going to criminal con and hanging out and stuff. They're just going under different group names. This is the, the days of like being in a band and like staying with your band, like your, your Rolling Stones, your ACDCs, like. Those days are gone. Everybody's like a free agent, right? And it's like, hey, like me, Jesse, and Joel Belton are going to get together. And we're going to call ourselves the Three Musketeers. But then like next week, it's like me, B, Second, Kimberly, and, and we're going to be like, you know, the, the FUBAR gang. It, like it doesn't matter. Everybody's like a freelancer right now. It's like, what can you bring to the table? What code do you have? And how much money can you make? Great cash, right? right? So like, so don't get wrapped around the axle on threat actor uh, names. Although I will say Black Cat, Alfie, and Lockbit are two that you should definitely be mindful of and Royal slash Black Suit since they came from Conti. Now, here's the deal. Always with ransomware, unless you're some like super advanced, like NIST CSF level five optimized InfoSec program, you shouldn't be like, what's Royal doing? We should protect from Royal. What you should be doing is, are we putting the right protection mechanisms in place? Are we educating our end users? Do we have tabletop exercises to practice what happens when we get hit? Do we have insurance to recover financially if we get hit? And what are our, you know, what's our policies around getting hit with ransomware? And then maybe some controls around like immutable storage and be better backups and crap like that. You should not be focused on specific ransomware threat actor gangs. Finally, because of the sake of time, um, I, yeah, burnt donkey. I love it. What I would remind everybody is that, um, Conti ransomware was a phenomenally successful exemplary. And again, I don't love praising these threat actor groups. But Conti was an exemplary threat actor ransomware criminal enterprise. And if you would like to learn more, go look at Brian Krebs, Krebs on Security, Conti Leaks. That's what you Google, Krebs on Security, Conti Leaks. When Ukraine got invaded by Russia, half of Conti ransomware gang or wizard spider is what they were called, uh, was Russian and half were Ukraine. And Somebody took it upon themselves in the Conti gang to officially come out and say that Conti stood with Russia. Well, obviously, the Ukrainian faction of the gang got pissed off. Again, they're all freelancers. So they they burned down Conti, the Ukrainian groups, uh, the Ukrainian gang members of Conti burned down Conti and released tons and tons of internal communications, tons of data. And the Conti leaks is what that was. And Brian Krebs did a roll up of that. It's a five part blog post series. It's a probably a 30 minute read. It's well worth it just to show you how advanced some of these ransomware threat actor gangs can be. And just to give you a little like, mm, like a little, num, 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 a little taster of what that is. They had over a hundred employees. They had HR. They actually had recruiting, um, you know, capabilities. They had a dev department, a QA department, a, um, a customer support department, right? Both victim facing and uh, affiliate facing. So like, dude, it was legit. Okay. Uh, so go check it out. Intel fixes high severity CPU bug that causes very strange behavior. 
on Tuesday, Intel pushed fixes for a high-severity CPU bug that affects virtually all modern Intel CPUs, causing them to enter a glitch state. Google identified the issue, which can result in system crashes and privilege escalation even when untrusted code is executed within a guest account of a virtual machine. Most cloud security models were assumed to be safe from such faults. Intel's official bulletin lists two classes of affected products, those already fixed and those fixed by Tuesday's microcode updates. All right, hold on one second. And now, a word from our spot. Hold on, I, I, I'm doing so many things here. Uh, we had seen someone mention earlier about Intel. Intel fixes high severity CPU bug causing strange behavior. I don't even know what we're talking about here. Um, all right. So if you can crash hypervisors, that's not good. Really quickly, if you're new here uh, or you're new to industry, a hypervisor is basically, think of a hypervisor as like a virtual server rack and VMs are the blades inside the server rack, okay? So it allows you to control multiple virtual machines. That's what a hypervisor does. So if you're allowed to crash hypervisors, if you crash a hypervisor, you're crashing all the VMs inside the hypervisor, which is no good for anybody. Um, Tavis Ormandy, oh man. See, I, okay, so check this out. Here's a little fun fact. You, I invite you to read the story. I didn't listen to the, um, I don't, so I don't prepare or research these stories and sometimes I'm distracted, but, um, so I invite you to read this story. Obviously, it's a cool, very relevant story. Intel chips are everywhere. One thing I would like to call to your attention that's a little bit under the radar is Tavis Ormandy, who they mentioned in the story, the one who, uh, I don't know if he discovered this or not, but he is a security researcher. Yes, he discovered the bug. He reported the bug. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if you want to uh, follow someone, this guy right here, Tavis Ormandy, he is brilliant. Okay, so Google is definitely fortunate to have Tavis Ormandy. He's on Google Project Zero. He is he's phenomenal. Okay, I haven't seen his name in probably like two years. But just to give you an example of how interesting and cool this dude is, uh, I was watching him on Twitter one day. He like came up. He's like, "Oh, I've got a three hour layover at the airport. Let's find a bug in in LastPass." I think it was. And then like for, you know, forty five minutes to an hour later. He posted like, hey, vulnerability disclosed the last pass details to follow because obviously you got to do responsible disclosure. But he's like, I found like a, you know, a, a buffer overflow attack or something like the dude's just bananas. Um, so uh, Intel downfall. So, OK, so Noob is asking about the Intel downfall uh, vulnerability. This particular vulnerability is not the downfall. Noob, I'll tell you what, I will talk about Intel downfall vulnerability during jaw jacking, um, which is right at the end of the show where we have a little bit of free time since the downfall vulnerability happened maybe two, three months ago. And I wanna just kind of keep on the stories, especially given uh, the trouble we had at the beginning of the show to keep with time. Long story short, um, this is a high severity bug. I don't know if there is any way to, um, it's called Reptar. So keep your ears open for that. I'm just gonna look for this CVE really quickly and see if there's anything around it. Um, it's an 8.8, .8, which is high, but not actively being exploited, which is cool. Um, sequence of processor and structures leads to unexpected behaviors. See, the question is, how is this particularly exploited? You could see here, AWS is aware of it. So to me, I think the more, like to me, individuals in chat right now, if you run an InfoSec program, your concern is lower. If you're running AWS infrastructure, if you work at Amazon or you work at Azure, Microsoft, if you work in cloud environments, they use hypervisors all the time. So if you were to have uh, a hypervisor crash and it's like running your clients, businesses, right? So like if Netflix goes down because AWS gets impacted by this bug, Netflix is going to be uber pissed, right? So it's going to, sorry, Kennedy, it's going to flow uphill. So this is really, to me, a concern around uh, cloud, you know, businesses running cloud infrastructure and stuff like that. Uh, but something to stay tuned with that. It's called Reptar. We'll see where it goes. Sir, Sysdig. For businesses innovating in the cloud, every second counts. Sysdig strengthens cyber resilience by reducing the attack surface, detecting threats in real time, and accelerating incident response. Our platform correlates signals across cloud workloads, identities, and services to enable businesses to prioritize risks and act decisively. Sysdig.
Secure every second. All right. If you're a first timer here, we do this every day at the mid roll. Hey, 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 hey. All right, guys. I hope you're getting value from the stream. Turning the, the music down just a little bit. Hopefully you're getting value from the stream. Hopefully you can continue to hear me. We are working through some technical difficulties. Thank you to the stream sponsors, Barricade Cyber and Panopsi, uh, and obviously for Wednesday uh, ACI Learning because they sponsor the Worldwide Wednesday segment. Guys, let me tell you quickly about anti-siphon training because I do love them. Anti-siphon training is disrupting the information security training industry by offering high quality cutting edge education to everyone regardless of their financial positions listen don't let money don't let cost prevent you from getting access to quality training well, anti-siphon training their goal uh with their pay what you can series is to make it so it's about you committing your time your focus and your energy to skilling up use the link in the description below Go to the training, go to the pay what you can training. I'm showing it on stream right now. Pay what you can training and click on it. And you'll see all of the upcoming schedules for what they have coming up for pay what you can, which means zero dollars. If you want to pay zero dollars, no judgment. Look at this, guys. This is crazy. Um, in January, John Strand is doing active defense and cyber deception. And then hot on the heels of that. John is doing SOC core skills. He's going to have a busy couple days, y'all. Uh, so giddy up on that. This is really, really, really awesome. If you're interested in learning from one of the best in the industry, yeah, look at all those John Strand emotes. If you're looking on stream right now, those are John Strand because the man is redefining how we do things in our industry, and I freaking love it. Hey, if you're getting value from the stream, whether it's entertainment value, educational value or frustrated value because you dealt with the audio issues at the beginning let's go dash um hit, hit the like button right now holding around 400 i love it guys check it out hey listen 400 of you today if you got value hit the like button i'm telling you right now on youtube it triggers the algorithm to tell other people that we're in here that's how we grow the community and that's how we help more people on their cyber journey all right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, guys, Michael Cooney currently has the baton. So, Michael Cooney, if you're in chat, holler at us. Listen, if you would like to build your network in a meaningful way, check out the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. This is exactly what you need to know. If you want to network professionally, you've heard it's important, but you don't know how to do it. If you want to supercharge your LinkedIn feed so it actually has value instead of just random crap, check it out. Simply Cyber Community Challenge. This is what you do. Go on LinkedIn and search for Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Hashtag. Second of all, the people posting are the baton holders. Connect with them. On their post, comment on their post. Okay. Hey, what's up? It's Jerry. Hey, your story resonates with me. Hey, thanks for being part of the community. Whatever. Then connect to the people in the comments. Here's what's going to happen. You just connected with the poster and the comments. So there's 11 new connections of, of meaningful, like-minded people. However, the other 399 people in chat right now are going to go through the comments and connect with those people. And since you're in the comments, you're going to connect with them as well. Your LinkedIn network is going to freaking explode with meaningful, deliberate, cyber supportive people. Believe me, five minutes a day for two weeks, you will... I'm not even saying you'll thank me. You'll just be in a better place. Believe me, professional networking is so freaking valuable. Holler at it. What's up, West Coast? Carolyn Matthews. Good to see you. All right, so we did the um, – let's get back to it so we can uh, do jaw jacking and such. Bug exposes 600,000 WordPress sites to attacks. A WordPress plugin called WP Fastest Cache is vulnerable to a SQL injection vulnerability that could allow unauthenticated hackers to read the contents of the site's database. The plugin is used to speed up page loads, improve visitor experience, and boost site rankings on Google Search. According to WordPress.org, over 600,000 websites are running vulnerable plugin versions all prior to version 1.2.2. A fix for the high severity bug was issued on Monday, and WP Scan plans to release a low complexity proof of concept exploit on November 27th.
All right. So check it out. This is really an interesting story. So if you're running, here's the TLDR for practitioners. If you're running WordPress anywhere in your environment, okay, like you might not even know about it because Carl <gasps> stood up a WordPress site for the bake sale. All right. Or maybe you're just using WordPress to front end your business's like landing page for whatever. Okay. It doesn't mass. You might have this plugin. If you have this plugin, it's very important that you check this out. If you have this plugin, they released a patch. Oh, you got to patch it. Ah, oh, you got to patch it. They released a patch on the first of the month. They are going to release an exploit code that is low level of sophistication, meaning, meaning anybody, basically, regardless of their skill level, will be able to use that exploit code to exploit this vulnerability. So, and, and I said, that, I think they said they're going to release it on like the 25th, 27th, whatever, end of the month. Here's the deal. If you do not patch this, believe me, if you do not patch this before they release that exploit code, you are going to get hit. It is trivial to use Shodan to find these things, or I'm sure there's WordPress vulnerability scanners to find these things. It's going to be a, a point and shoot exploit. And it's unauthenticated, which means they don't have to do any prep work and they can dump your database. So basically these internet facing WordPress sites after this exploit gets released are going to start getting popped. Believe me, unfortunately, not everybody uh, tunes in. Okay. What? What? 465 people. Are we just setting records every day now? Jesus. What's up, everybody? Thank you. Thank you for being here. All right. So check it out. Mark my words. The tools are there to patch this thing. You definitely don't want it. Also, unfortunately, expect a story in about three weeks of a major data breach because of this. Okay. Mark tape. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Second of all, um, I want to just call everybody's attention. This is a SQL injection vulnerability. Do uh, WP scan. Thank you, Leonardo. Leonardo, our local OSCP offensive security practitioners, always bring in the hot tools on what we need to do. So WP scan, point and shoot, exploit. This thing's going to get popped all over the place. Want people to know this is a SQL injection. SQL injections are real people. They're not freaking just in labs. They're not just in try hack me. Shout out to try hack me advent of cyber. Um, so learn these things and, and protect yourself, okay? And by the way, just, just based on my uh, experience, on my experience, um, look for the IT people and then the research, research and development team. They're always spinning up WordPress sites for some reason. They're like, oh, we just want to try this out. Um, and, and, and by the way, um, I have seen multiple times, multiple times. And if you've seen this too, go ahead and drop a preach in chat, hashtag preach. People will stand up WordPress sites and then they'll like turn on every freaking plugin. And then they're like, oh, I don't like these plugins. And then they just move on. Like they don't remove the plugins. It, it's, 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 it's a tale as old as time. A song as old as rhyme or what I, I forget. Beauty and the Beast, like whatever that song is. My point is, People will stand up and, and turn on every plugin and then they don't do system development life cycle and clean it up. They just leave it and it's called the tax surface and you're not helping us, Carl. Oh. And now it's time for You Should Probably Patch That Patch Tuesday oh, edition. You should have patch On Tuesday, it. Microsoft released fixes for more than five dozen security holes, including three zero-day vulnerabilities being exploited in active attacks. The first zero day allows malicious content to bypass the Windows smart screen security feature after a user clicks on a malicious link. The second zero day is evolved in the DWM core library and Windows 10 and later and Windows Server 2019 and later that can be exploited locally with low complexity and without needing high level privileges or user interaction. The final zero day is a Windows Cloud Files mini filter driver issue allowing attackers to escalate privileges in a relatively straightforward attack on Windows 10 and later in Windows Server 2008 and later. Other notable bugs include a malicious software installation flaw in Microsoft Exchange Server and three other Exchange bugs designated as exploitation more likely. Finally, SANS Internet Storm Center recommends prioritizing remediation for a denial of service vulnerability in ASP.NET Core and a Microsoft Office security feature bypass. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Lori. We're not we're not targeting you. We're not judging you. But uh, 
I mean, hey, you know, uh, it happens. Okay, so check it out real quick. Here's the deal. Windows Patch Tuesday. This isn't a thing. I mean, this is a thing everybody knows about. Uh, vulnerability management is a thing. Here's the TLDR with this. Most of us are running Windows um, uh, organizations or Windows-based you know, IT shops. When patches come in, you should have... Here's what you really should do. You should have a patch... Um, <laughs> A patch process, right? Here's the deal. IT patches their stuff first because they know how to like un unbrick it if there's a problem. Then you have champions within the ind like within your organization, like Carl in accounting, Lori in R and D, uh, Bob over in HR, and they patch their crap and see if anything breaks. Okay. Then once that doesn't happen, you push it out to the masses. Once you do that, by the way, you need to account. That's only going to cover, you know, 80% of your organization, the Pareto principle. You can't just say patch everything and you're good to go. 80% uh, of your organization is still 20% of attack surface, right? So you've got to be mindful uh, for machines that are not on the network, like salespeople that are on the road. You got to be mindful of like special R&D systems. And it's fine. Those things can happen. And this is why IT actually has a lot of work to do because they need to account for those vulnerable systems and either manage the access to them, cut off access if they're not at a certain patch level or not give them internet access. Like there, there's a bunch of different solutions for dealing with unpatched systems, but just be mindful. Um, a lot of newer people in the industry, like in, in IT, by the way, okay. I always, IT and InfoSec are two different departments. All right, guys. A lot of people in IT will like hit the nuke button of like patch everything send the patches and then they like want to pat themselves on the back about how great they are at patching things. And it's like, yes, you, you did patch 80% and like, that's a, that's a big W, but there's still 20% of the systems in the environment that are unpatched. Like what's your plan for that? And they're like, oh man, that's really hard. And it's like, yeah, no, no kidding. Like, like we could automate pushing the button, like with all due respect, we could automate that part. The 20% is the challenging part, right? That's that's where vulnerability management comes in because sometimes you've got to manage it. You can't you can't just patch all the things, right? Red teamers in, in chat, pen testers, Leonardo. Um, you can't do a pen test report and then tell the client like the remediation is to patch all the things and then leave, right? No, 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 no. That's the work. Yes, you got to patch it. VMware discloses critical appliance bug with no patch. VMware has disclosed a critical authentication bypass vulnerability affecting Cloud Director appliance deployments. Cloud Director enables VMware admins to manage cloud services as part of virtual data centers or VDC. Unauthenticated attackers could remotely exploit the bug in low complexity attacks that don't require user interaction. The issue only affects appliances running VCD Appliance 10.5 that were previously upgraded from an older release. The company said the bug does not impact fresh VCD appliance 10.5 installs, Linux deployments, or other appliances. VMware doesn't yet have a patch for the issue, but has published a temporary workaround to its knowledge base. All right. Critical unpatched authentication bypass founding, affecting cloud director. All right. So this isn't good. Um unauthenticated attackers, remote code execution. That's really bad. Low complexity attacks. Oh wait, oh, they're just defining what that is. Um, so there's no patch as of right now. I would imagine that VMware, this is another, this is another typical thing, right guys? So a, piece, a software company has a bug and they don't have a patch yet, but they will make a workaround. The workaround is literally a temporary fix until they can make the patch. Sometimes it's not as easy. Guys, here's another thing you got to remember. Like software companies, they can't just like find a bug and then write a patch and hit it because when they write a patch, they need to understand, does it break other things? Does it have any kind of, um, you know, uh, effect on other operations, either inputs or outputs, right? And they've got to do all the testing. First of all, they got to write the patch. Then they got to do all the testing to verify it works and stuff like that. We have seen, <clears throat> um, oh my God, what was it? Um, I think it was log4j. We've we've seen multiple instances where software developers or software companies have a knee-jerk reaction. Oh my god, this is the worst bug. I think um move it. Uh if I'm not wrong, move it. Uh the move it bug that Clop ransomware also fell victim to this. But people are losing their minds, right? They're just like straight up like 
Okay. And so what they do is they write a patch really quick and roll it out, but they don't test it. And what ends up happening is the patch introduces new vulnerabilities that start getting exploited. And the threat actors are right back at it, you know, back at square one for the developers. And they wasted that time on that patch. So the appropriate way, the, you know, Fortune 500 way to do it is to develop it in a controlled fashion, test it, you know, QA, QC, have uh, offensive security people see if they can brick it or, 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 or do things with it. And then when they can't roll it forward, remember guys, when you write a patch, okay, it's very easy for a threat actor to take the vulnerable code and the patched code and compare them and see what the developers did to fix the bug. And once they see that, then they can, I mean, first of all, if the, if the vulnerability wasn't disclosed, uh, security researchers and threat actors can then look at what they patched and backwards reverse engineer potentially what the vulnerability was. So that's one thing. Second of all, once they see that change, um, they're able to say, okay, well, they didn't address this part of the vulnerability. So let's just pivot. All right. So workarounds are good. Uh, no patches. My suspicion is that this will be patched uh, in, very soon by VMware. If you're running cloud director appliance, you should absolutely um, know about this um, and, and get it straightened out. They are saying that the new version of the cloud director is in version 10.5 is not uh, vulnerable to this attack. So be sure to check your version. Uh, but this is no joke, guys. This is a remote code unauthenticated vulnerability, which is pretty much the worst there is. Uh, let's just look at the score on this one. If I had to guess, it's 9.8. Let's check the score. Survey says, oh, they haven't done a score yet. It's too soon. Well, <laughs> this will be a 10, uh, uh, 9.8. Believe that. New research reveals software vulnerabilities are on the decline. On Tuesday, Synopsys Inc. published the 2023 Software Vulnerability Snapshot Report, which reveals that the number of known software vulnerabilities have dropped from 97% in 2020 to 83% in 2022. Only 27% of tests contain high severity vulnerabilities and 6.2% contained critical severity vulnerabilities. This is an encouraging sign that code reviews, automated testing, and continuous integration are helping to reduce common programming errors. Report data was derived from leveraging real-world hacking techniques like pen testing, dynamic application security testing, mobile application security testing, and network security testing on web apps, mobile apps, and network systems and source code. Although this is a positive development for the industry, the report highlights that single security testing solutions are no longer sufficient for identifying software vulnerabilities. All right, so check it out. I mean, remember, this is a vendor-sponsored report, so... Um, you got to kind of take that with a grain of salt. Sometimes like, um, sometimes it is really good reporting like Verizon data breach incident report. Um, that's a really good one. Um, a lot of the stuff that comes out of Ponymon is pretty good. Uh, this one is saying software vulnerabilities are on the decline. Now you'd be surprised by that because I don't know this story and I don't know this story and I don't know this story, like every story today, it was about software vulnerabilities. So this is a little surprising. Now, the argument that they're making is uh, we can attribute software vulnerability decline due to, um, thanks, Chris Bramble. We can define software vulnerability decline to uh, application software reviews. Basically, instead of just writing code and pushing it out, doing a little bit of QA, QC from a security perspective, use uh, unit case testing, input testing, and and you know that's that's good, right? Now, by the way, they're saying it went from 97% down to 83%. So it's still very high. Don't think that we are in a great uh, a great spot there. But um, one thing that they do mention, and, and, and I want to point this out, is that they talk about the vulnerabilities and they are more than just software vulnerabilities. Okay. So there's all software is vulnerable, right? It's just a matter of finding the vulnerabilities and using uh, software secure software design best practices. But they mentioned that uh, additional vulnerabilities are not based on code, not based on developers. And they specifically call out, um, hold on, misconfig. They call out here, server misconfigurations represent 18% of total vulnerabilities, okay? That is not something a software dev can do, but this is a tax surface. And I wanted to just share with you guys, like literally, I just produced a course which is free Anyone can take it. It's worth five CPEs and it's totally on brand for this um, called the uh, 
uh, what, what the hell did I call it? It's the um, continuous threat exposure management course. And it's talking about the evolution of vulnerability management. And because of server misconfigurations and over permissioning in cloud instances, and obviously software vulnerabilities that need to be patched, the attack surface needs to be managed in a different way. The exposure needs to be managed. So it, it, it's totally on brand with this. If you're interested, I'm going to drop a link in chat. Like literally, this is a free course that's totally aligned with what they're talking about right there and can help you understand the basically where we are in 2023. You get a Credly badge, by the way. Uh, and there I am. It's free. It's free. All right. So check it out. I dropped a link in chat. Five, six hours. You won't be disappointed. Um, believe me. Okay. So that's the deal with this. Um, but hey, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to give ourselves a W. I'm going to give ourselves a W. What's the correct W? There we, there we go, guys. We're doing all right. Software phones are on the decline. We win. And that does it for today's cybersecurity. Headlines. All right. That does it. That does it for today's cybersecurity headlines. We're right at 901. Way to pull up from the nosedive um, at the beginning of the show that we had there. Uh, shout out to all of you. We hit a new record 465. Boom, baby. Boom. Guys, I want to tell you right now, uh, just reminder that we are going to be doing some jaw jacking. But if you were here just for the news, thank you so much for being here. I hope you got value from the stream, entertainment, education, professional networking, a good time had by all. I hope you're ready to just absolutely destroy your day, conquer it, if you will, whether you're uh, you know, studying or interviewing or trying to break in, you're pivoting, whether you work in industry and you're looking to reduce cyber risk, you got to deal with cool. Got to deal with Carl. Whatever your situation is, I hope you absolutely freaking dominate today. All right? Holler at you. Guys, we're going to pivot over to jaw jacking. I'll talk about Intel downfall. Oh, I'm sorry. We do need a... Jenny... Guys, can we just for a second... Jenny Housley keeps me so in line and so, so, so uh, good. I, I will talk about Advent of Cyber. Try hack me in a second. Um because I have an update on that. But hey, really quickly, let's pick somebody for the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Jenny, you're the best. Thank you. Listen, Simply Cyber Community Challenge. We need a baton holder. If you don't know what we're talking about, ah, but if you do know what we're talking about, we need a baton holder for the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Who's available? Who wants it? Let's rock. Let's do this. Let's go. Michael Fink, I will talk about this in a hot minute. Promise you. All right. Good morning, Allison Ambrise over on LinkedIn. Good to see you. We are looking for a Simply Cyber Community Challenge baton holder. Who needs it? Who needs it? A Space Tacos. Oh, yeah, Jenny's the best. Who needs it? Nick Dowd. Um, you know who might want to get it? Where is um there was an individual? Uh, take easy, Arturo. Hey, J-Man, J-Man19920 is talking about where's the link to the LinkedIn challenge. J-Man, how would you like to take on the Simply Cyber Community Challenge? Not just what the link is, but how to actually dominate it. J-Man19920, give it to me. I know. All right, so Variable X can take it. Paris Gatsby can take it. All right, let's do it. Let's do... um. Here, I guess, Paris, uh, we'll get you next time. Variable X was the first one to jump on it. So variable X, let's do it. All right, hold on one second. All right, so variable X, uh, Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Variable X, we do need you to confirm that you want to take it, okay? I, variable X, you do need to confirm that you can take it, all right? We need you to confirm it, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm picking variable X simply because variable X was the first one in chat to say they want it. Um, stay, stay with us. Okay. So variable X is down. So here's the deal. Variable X is going to go on LinkedIn and share their story. Variable X, you will have to tell us your real name so people can find you search for the hashtag simply cyber community challenge, find variable X's post comment on it, connect with variable X, connect with the people in comments. Believe me, you're going to love it, okay? Variable X, you will need to share your real name, though, so we can uh, figure out who you are and connect with you. All right, guys, if you were here just for the news, thank you so very much. Genuinely appreciate it. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, Thursday, at 8 a.m. Eastern time. But for right now, we're going to do a little jaw jacking. If you don't know what jaw jacking is, we basically hang out, 
I do a little AMA for about 30 minutes and it's a good time. Until next time, stay secure. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Jaw Jacking, <laughs> Simply Cyber After Hours. Uh, so check it out. Uh, we got a good show for you. 30 minutes of kicking it. Um, Christopher Peters. All right, so Christopher Peters is going to be our Simply Cyber Community Challenge member. Love it. Hey, guys, shout out and thanks. We set a new record on the Daily Cyber Threat Free, 465 amazing of you, amazing people. We've got the 500th episode on November 22nd. Please turn out for that. We are trying to hit over 500 people live in stream to match the 500th episode. So tell a friend, bring a friend, bring a partner, whatever you whatever you got. Uh, let's bring the heat and let's see if we can uh, tip over YouTube on, um, on the 22nd, okay? Now, um, uh, somebody asked, uh, Michael Fink asked about Advent of Cyber Shirt. This is the 2022 shirt. You may be able to get it. Uh, uh, Try Hack Me is, um, they may have extra ones. I'm not sure. What I will tell you is that I am doing uh, Try Hack Me room for Advent of Cyber 2023. The reason I'm wearing this shirt today is because this morning I got contacted by Try Hack Me to order my 2023 shirt. It's not available yet. It, I got it in advance so I can wear it for the for the stream, uh, excuse me, for the produced video. Um, I will be doing magic numbers. Okay, so if you don't know what magic numbers are, check out my Try Hack Me room. Uh, not magic numbers, magic bites. Um, but the magic bites, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, then you can high five. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll learn about them in my Try Hack Me room um, with Advent of Cyber. So stay tuned for that. All right. Um, also want to share, what do we got here? Yeah, so Marcus Kyler, Alpha Sierra, I do like, when you say the music, Marcus and Alpha, let me know if you're talking about the transition song um, for the, for the um, for the the you know, the little stinger I play to go from Daily Cyber Threat Brief to jaw jacking, or if you're talking about the music I'm playing right now. Ah, okay. So just to clarify... Um, just to clarify, um, BSEC is saying that I said devs are not responsible for servers typically, but in DevOps, developers are responsible, especially when it's infrastructure as a code. Um, oh, Try Hack Me 2023 got announced. Let's take a look. And Noob, I am going to answer your question about... Um, Hold on one second. And mods, if Marcus Kyler or Alpha Sierra respond about my question about the music, can you grab that too? I just, um, where is Advent of Cyber 2023? There it is. So check it out. Advent of Cyber 20. I know there's a lot going on here. You can see my, my Cyber 101 course stuff is here. Let me just move all this stuff. I don't do a good job of keeping my screen clean for y'all like that. All right. So here's Advent of Cyber 2023. Let's check it out. Advent of Cyber 2023. Guys, if you don't know what Advent of Cyber is, it's a wicked awesome community run thing. Uh, okay. So the transition, I agree, Marcus. The problem is, um, as of right now, when I do the transition, it gets a copyright strike. And then basically um, <laughs> all revenue goes to the artist. So I'm trying to be um, I'm trying to be deliberate about when I play copyrighted music. That's why we didn't do Daft Punk this morning. All right. So advent of cyber 2023, you can see it. I dropped a link in chat. It's going to drop in 16 days. Guys, they have so many prizes. Check this out. We've got, holy crap. Look at this steam deck, razor hardware, AirPods, a gaming chair, a sick desk. I think I actually have the same desk. I have the same desk. It's awesome. I have this desk. It's a great desk. Um, dude, Jesus, man, try hack me's blowing it out. Way to go. Try hack me. Damn. Okay. So check it out. Um, Ooh, featuring featuring. I'm just saying, I mean, obviously John Hammond's amazing, but, uh, 
Hey, it's your boy. <laughs> uh, very cool. Very cool. Obviously, Insider PhD, she's phenomenal. She's over in the UK. InfoSec, Pat. Many of you know Pat Gorman. His show, his channel is blowing up. Uh, he's an offensive security guy. And then, uh, obviously, John Hammond is just an absolute treasure for our industry. So giddy up on that, guys. You're going to love it. Um, love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's jump back over here. So uh, Noob really quickly asked about Intel downfall. Let me look into this really quickly. Um, you can see here. You can't see here. You can see here. Uh, this is a link to Intel downfall. Noob was asking about Intel downfall. Um, so this attacks a weakness inside of a processor. Um, I think this is very similar to, um, Spectre and Meltdown. The, the thing is, this is bad, but in my opinion, this could be, I think this is bad more along the lines of advanced, uh, nation state threat actors. I do believe that you need very, very uh, specific skills to get into and attack the processor. I think this is a side channel attack. Um, it only affects the six Skylake and 11th Tiger Lake generation uh, CPUs. It does say you can attack this through the web browser. It's possible. Um, see how, okay, so here's my thoughts on this one, noob. Is there a way to detect downfall attacks? It's not easy, so that's concerning. Uh, there are microcode updates coming, but it's difficult to patch uh, processors. Like there isn't a quick easy button where you hit that. Um, I'm trying to look. I to me, I've I've deprioritized downfall as an issue just because it doesn't really work in the in the space of my um, of the organizations I'm protected. Um, you can see on GitHub, there is an actual POC for an attacking it right now. So again, lowering the barrier to entry for threat actors, which is not good. Um, and let's see what the um, CVE, CVE score is here. Hold on, we got to get the CVE score. That'll help. The CVE score obviously doesn't take into account um, your environment, but... See, it's a 6.5 medium. Again, I'm not downplaying it, noob. But for me, like we have so many problems and so many issues that we deal with that like, unless it's like north of 8.0, I don't really pay it much mind unless you're national security related or, you know, executive Fortune 5 company or something like that. I don't think it's a major concern or I'm not treating it as a major concern. Okay. All right, for YouTube access. All right. All right. Um, let's see. What's a CVE score? Runaway Amish female asks. Great question. Very good question, Amish. So check it out. A CVE score. So NIST National Vulnerability Database. Every vulnerability has this designation, okay? CVE, and then the year the CV, the vulnerability was disclosed, and then some unique identifier. The unique, just really quickly, so people know, the unique identifier, it, it does not indicate that there was forty thousand nine hundred eighty-one vulnerabilities released in twenty twenty-two prior to this. The way it works is they're all unique, but like Microsoft will get issued like zero to ten thousand, Google will get ten thousand to twenty thousand, right? Like, and then if you're random, like you know, one off piece of code or something, there's a bucket of numbers that get used for those ones. But NIST and MITRE used to do this, manages this CVE score uh, structure, okay? So that that's what's going on. Now, there's two scoring systems, CVSS version three and version two, and there's actually a version four coming out that's a game changer. So I recommend everybody check out CVSS version four because that's gonna go live pretty soon here. Uh, let me see really quickly. Um, I don't know when it's going to go live, frankly, but it, it's coming online very soon and you're, you're going to want to know about it. But anyways, in a, in a very complicated fashion, uh, Amish female, the way it does is it looks at 
How easy is it to exploit? Like, do you have to physically be on the computer? Can you do it over the local network? Can you do it from the internet? What kind of authentication do you need? Do you need uh, no authentication? Do you need local, uh, like uh, a, a general user account? Or do you need like a system priv account? Um, um, and then what is it compromise? Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And based on those factors, they'll give it a score. Also, if it's being actively exploited in the wild, they'll elevate the score. A CVSS score, just to put a finer point on it, helps practitioners like you and I understand what how bad a vulnerability is. So like for me, really quickly, I look at a base score of 6.5. I'm like, this isn't too bad. I'm not super worried about it. I'm not getting up on the weekend to deal with this. A score of 10.0, your pants are on fire. Fancy. All right, let's go. What else we got? Uh, happy to happy to give access. All right. This song's a little down. All right. Amelia Garcia's dropping bot podcast recommendations. November 14th, 23, season 14, episode 69, Star Talk. Learn about Apocalypse. All right. I'm not sure what we're talking about there. Hey, Chrissy Jordan. Welcome to the squad. All right. Did Jerry drop the threat management course link? I did, but I'll drop it again. Who asked that? Um, who asked that? Uh, Becky Gaylord. Becky, there's a link. There's a link to the course itself. All right. <laughs> All right, Jerry, did you see my question? I did not, Carrie. Let's, let's find it. Uh, let's find Carrie's question. Carrie, can someone grab Carrie's question? Please, mods. Uh, while I answer a different one, how can I stay consistent as sometimes it gets harder to focus and continue working on skills? Abdullah, that is basically just an individual thing. I know it's hard. Um, there's different mechanisms. What I like to do is turn off notifications on my phone, turn off, I close email, I close discord and I say, all right, I'm going to do this right now. And I focus on it. And, you know, some people like Pomodoro methods, which is like 20 minutes on five minute break, 20 minutes on five minute break. You need to break in my opinion, Abdullah, you need to break things down into manageable bites the same way that we consume, you know, social media content. If you sit down, you're like, I'm going to do a 14 hour lab right now. It's very fresh. It's very, it's very hard to have that. But if you say, Hey, this 14 hour lab, I'm going to stand up the labs instance right now. And then you stand it up and you feel a sense of accomplishment. A milestone has been met. And then maybe you take a break, take a break. And then you go on, Hey, we're going to run this first thing. So, um, these are, I, I, there's different techniques, Abdullah, but what I would say is have a goal in mind, right? Cause you always got to have, again, I'm not a human psychologist, but like for me, I like to have a goal in mind, right? And work towards the goal. And honestly, I'm a huge fan and people in chat, if you feel this way, let me know. I'm a huge fan that like, once you get momentum, like it's easier to keep going, right? Uh, objects in motion stay in motion. So like if I stand up the lab instance, well, I'm like, well, I'm already kind of here. Let's play a little bit. Oh, like let's do the first lab. Well, that was fun. Let's do another one. And in no time you're, you're cranking through it versus procrastinating, right? Uh, the, the final thing I'll say is don't procrastinate. Just, just lean into it. Just hit record, just go, just do something, do it. Right. And, and, and don't get uh, wrapped around the axle. A lot of people get wrapped around the axle of like trying to organize their work. Oh, I'm going to put down everything I'm going to do. Oh, I'm going to put tags on things. Ooh, I'm going to list all these things. And like, at some point you've got to do the work. Okay. Hopefully that helps Abdullah. Uh, Carrie says, Jerry, how can you get a business email so I can take your free class? All the emails I have are invalid. Ooh, good question, Carrie. Um, let's see, Carrie, I don't know if the church, I know you're heavily involved with the church. I don't know if they have uh, a website and you could get some type of email address from them. That could be, uh, an opportunity. Um, you know, I don't know if you're involved with any type of school. I think maybe an EDU account might work. Um, I could certainly, if you want, I could certainly try to ask. I, I could ask XM Cyber to um, give you access to it. It's not my course. It's their course. I also want to 
be careful with that because Carrie, I, I, I like you and I would like to help you, but I also don't want a deluge of 3000 requests coming in asking for individual help on getting access to something. Cause I can't manage that load. Um, Laura Flores brings up an option. You could bring you could buy a domain, a uh, couple bucks. Um, so th there are options, um, you know, with a domain, you could just do a redirect, uh, and certainly work that as well. All right. Runaway female, uh, speaking of links, I haven't checked, but how do you share your links that you mentioned on the video on the VODs description? Um, so runaway Amish female, I'm not sure which links. I mean, we drop them in chat. A lot of times I'll put them in the description below. If you're watching on LinkedIn, it's hard. It looks like you're watching on YouTube, but, um, we try to put them in. Also, you can ask on the, uh, ho hold on runaway Amish female. If you're not on the discord server, I just dropped a link in discord. You should totally check that out. Um, giddy up on that. When is the next world of haiku? Really want to try it after hearing about flaming donkey. So Mariana Albright, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but every other Monday I do a live stream playing world of haiku. Um, and you know what? Maybe I'll do flaming donkey uh, as a live stream next month. So Monday, Mon I do it every other Monday. And my next episode is, you know, I got to tell you, it annoys me. All right. So, uh, November 20th, November 20th, when I click on the little calendar clock thing in the corner of a windows operating system, you know what I want to see? I want to see the calendar. If the calendar does not pop, but a million notifications pop, that's annoying. I'm clicking on a calendar. I want to see the calendar. All right. So Mariana on, um, Monday, November 20th at two at 4 PM Eastern time, I will be streaming uh, forge content on world of haiku and potentially flaming donkey with our very own range creator, Jenny Housley. All right. I guess we're doing, I guess we're doing race car stuff in the background. Will the simply cybercon videos be uploaded to YouTube? Yes. Uh, great talks. So yes. So, uh, jet, um, Jonathan Carpenter asks about simply cybercon really quickly. If you did not, um, if you do not know what we're talking about, because maybe you're new here or you just missed it or whatever, um, this was simply CyberCon. This was a, come on, resident. Um, this is a, a conference that we hosted on November 8th. It was amazing. We had two tracks, probably 30 speakers, workshops. John Strand keynoted it. It was dope. And um, all of the talks have been split out. Shout out to Base Case, DJ Bsec, and Kimberly for coordinating the efforts. I have not been notified yet. Um, I believe all the work has been done as far as splitting them up. They are going to get posted to YouTube, Simply Cyber Channel soon. And yes, so I would expect uh, within the next you know five business days for those videos to be produced and they'll be individual and there will be a um, playlist for both of those. So look out for that. All right. Good stuff, y'all. Jaw Jack and let's go. I love it. Good to see Jesse Johnson. End of the day, um, individual streams will be up. Very cool. Thank you for the update, uh, Kimberly. All right. Good. I, I'm happy to hear that, Mariana Albright. Uh, guys, I got to tell you, I really enjoy, like, look at all the, um, the colored names, right? That would indicate um, squad memberships. Love the squad. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Um, so Ima Akwara says, what GRC cert would you suggest to add to your masterclass? Well, uh, Ima, it depends what you want to do. But for me, um, I have both of these certifications and I would recommend them. Okay, so check it out. They're both from ISACA. Okay. They're both from ISACA. If you want to be an auditor, the CISA, in my opinion, is the go-to one. And if you want to work like as, you know, uh, eventually a CISO, but like some type of uh, GRC uh, manager, director, whatever, the CISM is where it's at. These have high market value. Um, I let mine lapse because I, I, I don't really need them anymore. Uh, but I, I have had them and, uh, you know, they're good. They're good. You'll see them on a lot of job recs for that type of work. So that's what's up with that.
I got to tell you, I, I really can't. I like, I like the, um, there we go. I like the kind of synthwave video stuff. No commercials. That's more my speed. Um, I guess this is a commercial for whatever. Ugh, oil changes. Get out of here with that noise. All right. Squad strong, Alan Norris. That's right. Love, love it, love it, love it. Hey, Matthew Natchi. Alan Norris. I, I, I think I met Alan Norris at B-Sides Charleston. Um, so if, if you're the same Alan Norris, I, although I thought your name was uh, not Alan. I thought it was a different first name, but I'm not trying to dox you. Um, Casually Joseph's in the house. What's up? All right. So what do I have uh, that's uh, like, like worth sharing updates? Oh, 500th episode. We're doing massive, massive giveaways. So look for that. Um, including Try Hack Me, TCM Academy, ACI Learning, GRC Analyst Masterclass. Um, we've got the XM Cyber course. Um, I'll be doing Advent of Cyber Day 5 Magic Bites. Take it easy, Jim Wales, as always. Re-asking question about Sec Plus. Can somebody find the Jay Fish question? Sorry, Jay Fish, I didn't see it. Can someone find the Jay Fish question? Okay, no problem, Alan Norris. There's somebody with a very similar name who said, what's up? Randy Edwards, do you recommend a course for PCI DSS? Uh, PCI is a very niche uh, uh, focus. It's around payment cards. I will say, in order to do PCI uh, work, right? Um, okay, if someone sees a question from Jfish, let me know. Um, so here's the thing with PCI. The only way you're going to get work with PCI is two ways. One is an independent auditor, which... Training won't count exclusively. You have to be a qualified, uh, they, I think it's QSA. You have to be a qualified uh, auditor to do PCI audits uh, legitimately. So like that's in addition to training. So that's a pain in the A. So you'd have to get PCI training and then go work for a company that does those audits and is going to pay for you to get certified. Or you get a job working at a business that takes credit card information but in my experience, nobody's hiring exclusively for PCI. They'll hire you for GRC, and then you'll be the PCI person that works there. Uh, so PCI, I, I don't know much about PCI. I've never had to. I've always worked at places that <laughs> I've always worked at places that had um, a PCI person, and we just always deferred to them. Uh, yeah, it's J J Fish. Uh, Jfish says, do we need to know the scoring standard and metrics or CVSS for the SEC plus test? Um, I don't think so. Let me see really quickly. Um, I mean, this is how I would, I mean, this is how I would Google it. Okay. Um, exam security plus exam objectives. And then Jesse Johnson is Jesse Johnson in chat. Jesse is CVSS on uh, SEC plus. So Jesse Johnson runs the um, Slay Security, which is a uh, work group that does Slay Security Plus, which is a work group that does Security Plus training. Uh, definitely check that out. And um, he would know better than I would, but just looking at the exam objectives, attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities. So really uh, it would be in section domain one if it's gonna have it at all. Take it easy, Frederick. Good to see you. All right. I don't think it is in there, honestly, but let's take a look. Um, compare and contrast this. Analyze indicators to determine attack. Um, explain attack vectors. Security current. All right, here we go. Um, I don't see anything around CVSS, okay? So here, let, actually, let's use Control F. All right, here we go. This is all that's in there. It's it's one section of one subsection of one domain. So there might be a question, but I don't think you got to be an expert in it. Okay. Let's go. Got one more minute. Hey, Cyber Hamburglar. Slay Sec Plus, big stream tonight. They're announcing a new host, I'm pretty sure. So give, giddy up on that. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Jay Fish. Uh, Jesse Johnson did drop a link. Um, in chat, I know, I know. <sighs> hopefully, hopefully. All right. Um, there was another question I thought. 
Leon Elliott asks a question. When law enforcement solves cyber incidents, are they required to submit how they remediate the issue? Uh, I don't think so. Um, so that's a really, um, with all due respect, Leon, that's a little bit of a vague question because I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like when law enforcement solves a cyber incident, they don't really solve a cyber incident. If you're talking about um, a threat actor committing a cyber crime and law enforcement going after them and then getting evidence that that crime was committed and in fact adjudicating that criminal, are they involved in any of the remediation if that's your question, absolutely not. Law enforcement, with all due respect, doesn't care. Like, they care about the victim, but not really. Like, it's like, okay, so just to do a quick example. I'm a business, right? And I get hit with ransomware. And I call the FBI or I call whatever. And they come in. They're just basically trying to get information from me on who, what the threat actor did, where are they coming from, attribution, all these other things. And then they go off. It's the same as, like, um, if I may... It's the same as like getting mugged, right? So Leon Elliott, I run up to you, punch you in the stomach and take your wallet. You call the police and say, hey, this svelte, good looking, handsome, dashing, charming individual, LOL, uh, stole my wallet. Now, um, law enforcement is going to go after me, right? And they're going to beat me up or arrest me or whatever. Uh, and say I already spent the money. Law enforcement isn't going to like give you a new wallet, walk you through best practices for protecting your wallet. They're not going to give you your money back. Like there's no, there's no involvement with you except that you're a victim and maybe they want you to testify or provide information that could lead to conviction of the attacker. You, you see what I'm saying? Like law enforcement isn't in the business of, of helping you get your so situation sorted out. All right, guys, we're at 932. Um, I genuinely appreciate all you guys. I'm going to boogie. I got a ton of work. I'm working on the cyber one-on-one course right now. That's hyper-focused. We got the simply cyber con videos coming out soon. I'll be dropping a link to the forge video. I'll be doing on Monday as a live stream tomorrow is simply cyber live with Charles Finfrock. He will be sitting right there, right there. Um, it's going to be epic. Um, we haven't, um, yeah, exactly. Unless your pipeline, we haven't, um, promoted tomorrow's show. So it'll be, it'll be coming in hot, right? It'll be coming in hot tomorrow. Simply cyber live with Charles Finfrock. It'll basically be a, um, it'll basically be a, um, what do you call it? A freaking, um, uh, fireside chat. Sorry. I got distracted. Um, by uh, Ferguson. So Ferguson, um, here you go. Here's a link to what you need. Come on, man. Here's a link to what you need, uh, Ferguson, for the CVE stuff uh, around WordPress, WP, whatever it was, WP thingamajiggy. Okay, this is it right here. Okay. All right, guys, I'm Jerry, your chat. Thanks so much for all you do. Thanks for being here. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I will be posting Charles Finfrock's OSINT workshop back onto the channel. BSEC has cleansed most of the naughty bits. Uh, there's still some suggestive material, but I think it's going to qualify as not inappropriate on YouTube. Um, like a, 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 a woman in a bikini bent over, but the stuff that he blurred out was absolutely um, concerning. Uh, so anyways, be good, be good to each other. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for dealing with the, uh, the, the freaking audio issues at the beginning. We get through it. It's what we do. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. We went around the world. Epic win. Glum hippo. Glum hippo. Hold on really quickly. Glum hippo with a super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Glum Hippo. And then Glum Hippo says, not found. Oh, oh okay, because it's $4.04. Thank you very much, Glum Hippo. Uh, I, like that, uh, I like that joke. All right, be well, everybody. Until tomorrow, stay secure.
everybody. I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed the 